We got to hear about the Proverbs 31 woman. No, no, no. No, no, no. We won't get, we're not even going to talk about her. We're going to talk about another woman. Well, kind of, sort of, we're going to talk about her, but you'll get it. Okay? But let's read together Proverbs 31 in the NKJV, New King James Version, and we'll read uh, verses 1 through 10. And I'll read aloud. You can read along silently. The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. Next verse. What, my son, and what son of my womb, and what son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find a virtuous wife for her worth? is far above rubies. I'll stop right there. You can be seated. And I want to talk to you today from this topic. If I gave this message a topic, um, I would call it Lessons from Liam's Mom. Lessons from Liam's Mom. This is Mother's Day, right? And so we're going to learn from a great mother in the scriptures, Liam's, King Lemuel's mother. And so just to contemporize everything, modernize it, we're going to call we're going to call her Lim's mom today. You know, well, this is what we know from the text. We can pick this up from the text. Whoever this mother and son was, we know this about about her and him. That this mother uh, did not birth and raise an ordinary son. This mother birthed and raised a king. She was the mother of a king. And the king, of course, is a man of great power, a man of great wealth, a man of great uh, influence and significance. This made her the queen mother, right? So she wasn't an ordinary mother. She was a queen mother. She was raising somebody incredibly important in the world. She was raising a king, power, wealth, influence. She was uh, the mother of a king. Number two, she was a very wise woman. She was a a virtuous woman. She was a wise woman. Some, Some say, some Bible scholars say that she possibly was the virtuous woman herself. She possibly was the Proverbs 31 woman. When she was giving a description to her son of this virtuous woman that he was supposed to find and keep. And she was detailing what this woman was like. Some say that she was painting a self-portrait. It was her. Because, come on, ladies, you know you want your son to marry somebody just like you, right? (laughs) Really, in our heart, we do. We get a little perturbed. We... I don't know, I don't have a son, but I can imagine if I did have a son, I'd get a little perturbed if he brought home a woman that was the opposite of me, right? I'd be be a little perturbed. It was like, because from what I understand, I don't have a son. Y'all know I don't have a son. And really in my heart, I really long for a son. I get a little envious when I see women with little boys, because little boys are in love with their mama. Little boys are like, Mommy, you're so pretty. Mommy, your hair's so pretty. Mommy, you look so pretty. Ooh, Mommy, that's so good. Ooh, Mommy, they just in love with their mama. I go, I need one of them. (laughs) How do you get one of them? Can I order one? (laughs) Can I borrow? (laughs) Can I borrow somebody's little boy? (laughs) Build my self-esteem. I need somebody in love with me like that. My girls love me, but it's not like that. And so I can imagine, you know, if, 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 if my son, who, who is supposed to be in love with me, and you bring home a woman who is the opposite of me, it's like, what's
what's up here? I thought this was me. Th- Come on. At least honor me by bringing home a woman to something like me. Yeah. Right? Well, I don't know. That's how I would feel. Any mamas or sons in the house, is that how you feel? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so it could be if that, if that is the reasoning, with that reasoning, it could be that the picture that she was painting of the virtuous woman she was giving she was telling her 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 son the kind of woman that he should go and find and keep it probably was a self-portrait right so um this was a a very wise and virtuous woman Lim's mom what I'm trying to show you is Lim's mom had it going on trying to paint a picture of Lim's mom so we can put some weight on these words that she shared with her son. Number three, the third thing, you know, we I picked up about this unknown woman, who we're calling Lim's mom, is she loved her son very much. And she wanted him to live his very best life. In that, the heart really of every mother is that you love your children and you want the very best for them. You want them to live their very best life, a better life even than you lived. You want, you want better for them than you had for yourself. Even if you lived a great life, you want greater for your children. And so this wisdom and this counsel that she was giving her son, it was to lead him to his very best life. That's what she wanted for him. She loved him very much. And then the fourth thing um, that we can see about this mother and this son is that this son, King Lemuel, whoever he was, he also loved his mother very much. And he highly valued her words. So much so that the first verse of Proverbs 31 says that these are the, the utterances or the sayings of King Lemuel, which his mother taught him. Basically, he made her sayings his own. This wisdom that she gave him, he made it his own. They became his sayings. They became his wisdom. They became the guiding factors of his life. His sayings, his mother's words became his words. His mother's wisdom became his wisdom. Boy, she shaped that young man. Yeah, she did. And I believe um, that, you know, her words were so strong that Liam actually, as a king, he had them chronicled. Isn't that amazing? He had them chronicled, and they made it into the holy text called the Bible. Woo! Yeah, he had his scribe scribe it. These are the sayings of King Lemuel. My mother taught this to me. Scribe it. Write it down. And it was canonized. Canonized means that um, it became eternal. And it made it into what we call the Holy Bible. So these are powerful words. Lim's mom was a bad girl. (laughs) And I think that uh, Lim, these lessons, as I was studying just the first 10 verses, I didn't even, I didn't take, I don't want to go any further than uh, the first 10 verses. There's 31 verses in Proverbs 31. But I just want to go through the first 10 verses. And four powerful lessons popped out for me from Liam's mom. And I think that this, um, these four lessons really are powerful guideposts for our life. For any man or woman who wants to live their very best life. Anybody in here want to live your very best life? Yeah, I want to live my very best life. I am very, what does that mean? If you live your very, very best life, 
when you get to heaven, you can expect to hear these words, well done, good and faithful servant. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'm not after wealth. I'm not after fame. I'm not after a lot of material stuff. I've tasted of a little of all of that. It does not satisfy the soul. What I am after is well done, good and faithful servant. Because I get that my life on this earth is but a vapor. And I'm preparing for eternity to stand before my creator. And I am determined to hear well done, good and faithful servant. That means I lived my best life. And to do that, we need some wisdom. Yeah. And mothers, my God, I'm so grateful for the wisdom. Of mothers and you can trust the wisdom of mothers because because you know a mother a mother is love she loves you she's not going to tell you anything intentionally to harm you to lead you the wrong way not intentionally not intentionally her intention my god is she 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 wants the best for you the very best for you very best. So I believe that we can trust the wisdom of this mother. You know, and I, as I've been thinking about, I'm called to the hurting. And as the days like this when we celebrate and most people are celebrating, I can't help it. It's just my, it's the, it's the spiritual gift on my life is compassion for people who are hurting. You know, and, and my heart, just all this weekend, has been going to, to people who, this day is a celebration for a lot of us, but other people might be, you might be mourning. You might be missing the love of a mother. I'm not talking about because she died. I'm talking about because she never had one. And really not every mother is a good mother. Some people are nursing hurts and wounds of a mother. It's just the truth. I've been doing this for 20 years in the lowest most horrific places with people, and I've heard every horror story you can imagine. And so I know not everybody is celebrating and jumping up and on down on the inside about mother. You know, I, I get that. And so while you may not have had one naturally or you may be missing one naturally, you still need the God, gentle guiding hands of a mother. You still need it. I'm almost 45 years old. I admit I still need it. I really do. Even at this age and stage of my life, I still need it. Yeah. So we're going to get some this morning. Everybody ready for these lessons from Liam's mom? All right. We're going to get some, some lessons from Liam's mom. All right. Number one thing I saw this lesson from Liam's mom, what Liam's mom taught him and, and, and that is so powerful and what we all need to know. Number one, don't forget who you are. Number one, don't forget who you are. Can you pull up on the screen verse 4, Proverbs 31? Don't forget who you are. Listen to what she said to her son. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink. She basically is saying, don't forget who you are. You are not an ordinary person, Lemuel. You are a king. She went on to say that wine and intoxicating drinks were for poor people who needed to forget their misery. But that is not who you are, Lemuel. You are a king. Because you are a king. You can't do what everybody else does. and You can't go where everybody else goes. Don't forget who you are. My husband says it this way. Identity is everything. He says, hope if I can quote it right, when you don't know who you are, you don't know why you are. And when you don't know why you are, you are at risk of wasting your life. You're going to end up lost. The prodigal son, I think about him, 
he, when he left his father's house and went off into that far country, he was the son of a very wealthy, rich man. He went away from his father's house into a far off country, and he was a Jewish boy, and he, 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 he took off his identity just for a moment, and, and just for taking off that identity for however long it was, he ended up uh, in a hog pen. Jews and swine don't mix. And he ended up in a hog pen, working in a hog pen, because that's all the work he could find in that far off country. And he got so hungry, he almost did the unthinkable for a Jew and ate the slop that the hogs were eating. But thank God, right before he almost did the unthinkable, he remembered who he was. <laughs> the Bible says he came to himself. He remembered who he was, and he said, why on earth, oh my God, what am I doing here? He remembered his father's house, that he was a son in that house, and he remembered his experiences in that house, and he said, I'll go back, and, and I'll beg just to become a servant as long as I can get back there, but the point is, he remembered right before he almost went, he went for the juggler, <laughs> Before he got right there, because I'm telling you, eating slop for a Jew would be like slitting their throat. He remembered who he was. Don't forget who you are. That's what this mother, Liam's mom, taught him. You are a king. There's nothing like a mother to remind you and encourage you and nurture you in your identity, in your highest identity. Isn't that something? That's what moms do. You know, my husband says this way, and I completely agree. We get two things from the father, identity and affirmation. A mom cannot give us identity. We see that even biologically, the blood that is running through our veins is, is the father. We get that, that uh, I'm not a scientist, but I understand that comes from the father. That's why we take on his last name. A father gives us identity. But a mother encourages that identity. A mother nurtures that identity in us. Oh my gosh, if you ever are just low and you are down and you and 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 your confidence is broken and you just, you know, on the inside, you know, we just have those discouraging moments. You know, most of us, who is the one to call? You call mama. I don't know about you. My mama has Alzheimer's. And I go to the nursing home to see her once or twice every week. And when I sit there, even in her um, mental confusion. I never leave there and she doesn't encourage me. She says something to encourage me. And usually it's real good. <laughs> I go, gosh, even in Alzheimer's, the spirit of a mother is still on her. She'll say something wise that anchors me and reminds me. It's just sometimes it's just simple. But it will, it'll anchor me. And it'll remind me of who I am. And that's what mothers do. First lesson from Liam's mom. Don't forget who you are. She was constantly reminding him that he was a king. And all of her counsel was in the context of identity. You are a king. 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 I remember one of my brothers was in jail. My mind is going back to this, this Mother's Day, and I'm remembering my mom even. And uh, one of my brothers, this was years ago, maybe 20, almost close to 20 years ago. And one of my brothers, he was, he was prodigal, and he, he was just lost. And he ended up in jail. <laughs> this is what's funny. It's kind of funny. If he was here, he would tell you himself. You know why he was in jail? He was strung out on alcohol. And he was in jail because he stole some ground beef from the grocery store. <laughs> Y'all go ahead and laugh. He'll, he'll tell you himself. He'll crack up. He, he really, that's how far off crazy he was. He was hungry. He didn't have any money. He went to the grocery store, and they called him. He had put some, some hamburger meat up under his jacket. That's how lost he was. So I went home. I was single back then. I had just gotten saved. Boy, I'm telling you, I was a holy roller. Mama called me. I said, I'm coming. Help that boy. I'm coming. Mama, I'm coming. 
So I came, went home to Forest City, Arkansas, and me and my, got my mama ready, we got ready, and we went up to the jail. Now my brother, who has a master's degree, was sitting with his eyeglasses on, looked like Malcolm X, he's highly intelligent. And I'll never forget, he came pimping out. So everybody in my family, cool. You know, he came pimping out to the window with his orange outfit, whatever was the orange outfits they have on? Orange outfits with his glasses on, looking like a professor. Sat down with that head cocked to the side. He was embarrassed as he could be. And my mama said, what on earth are you doing here? This is not who you are. You do not belong in here. Big crocodile tears came rolling down his eyes. She reminded him of who he was. You don't belong in here. This is not for you. This may be for some of these other people, but this is not for you. You're my child. You don't belong in here. And that's what I say to you. Never forget who you are. Your identity anchors you. It won't let you go too far. Don't forget who you are. Second thing, second lesson we can learn from Lim's mom. Second thing I see that she taught her son and that we need to know is don't waste your strength. Don't waste your strength. Verse 3, take me to verse 3. Look what she told her son. Do not give your strength to women, Lemuel nor your ways to that which destroys kings. Don't waste your strength, Lemuel. Now, I'm going to have to say this. I, I really, I, I should have done it. I wish we had had children's church because there's some things I, I, I want to, to say here, but I'll have to say this in a way as everybody is an adult. I don't think I'll have to be too graphic. I'm going to just say some real general things, and you can read between the lines. You'll, you'll get it. You'll know what I'm talking about. I'm saying this because it is great wisdom for you men and also for the women in here. Um, the context of what she was saying here is don't give your strength to women. She was, she was saying that uh, when a man lays with a woman, he loses strength. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? From Lim's mom, when she taught her son that we all need to know and we could benefit from, benefit from, is don't abuse your power. Verse 8 and 9, don't abuse your power. Look what she told her son, who was the king, who was powerful and wealthy and sig significant. His words were weighty. Open your mouth. Use your voice for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth. Judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. That's what Liam's mom taught him. Don't abuse your power, son. Your power was given to you to help people, to lift up people. Don't abuse it. Don't abuse your power. Use your power to help people. I think I heard Andrea or someone say up here giving the awards away that we learn love from mothers. Moms are the soft side of life. Moms teach us how to love and to be loved. Mom, uh, uh, um, you know, and especially, it's really important for men. You know, we say that men need a father. A man teaches, uh, only a man can teach a man to be a man or something of that nature. I've heard men say, I agree with that. I agree with that. So it's like my husband, he can raise some great daughters and they can be, make them powerful and strong and all of that, but he can't teach them how to be a lady. He has no idea. He's never been one. Only I can teach them to be a lady. Okay? Can you imagine him sitting there trying to teach them how to hold their legs? Hold your legs like this. It, he just looked awkward doing it. He done had a foggiest idea. He'd be like, baby, daddy don't know. He does not. <laughs> right? Okay, and the same with a man. I completely agree. Only a man can teach another man to boy to be a man. 
okay? But, but a man also needs a mother in his life because without that, um, I mean, he won't really know how to be soft and to be compassionate and to love, to show emotion. It's not natural for a man. A mom cultivates that side of them. Because a man, he's aggressive. All that testosterone, boy, he's just aggressive. He is a conqueror and a competitor and a winner and a fighter. And I'm so grateful. I'm glad I got one of those. I am very rarely afraid. When I'm with my husband, it's just something in me just feels covered. I am so grateful for that. I do not want to make him into some little lady. I like a man's man. Be a man. Let me be the softness of the family. You just be a man. Let me be pretty. Please let me be the pretty one. You be a man. I do not want to be uh, trying to figure out is this my earring or your earring. I'm the only one that wears earrings in this family. Is this my body butter or your body butter? I'm the only one that needs to be that soft in this family. Be a man. A woman wants a man. Come on, sisters. I'm trying to help y'all. My man already knows this stuff. I'm trying to help you. Be a man. My goodness. Now put some deodorant on and clean yourself up. Yes, All right. <laughs> Want a man. So I like that aggression. But then, but that's why every man needs a mother. Because without the mother developing his heart, he just run over everybody and everything and just. <laughs> yeah. She develops that soft side of him. Yeah. And that's what she was, this mom was doing for him here. Saying, I know you're king. I know you're powerful. At your word, people's heads can get cut off. At your word, whole nations of people can be destroyed. At your word, son. Your word is sovereign in this province as the king. At your word, nothing will be withheld from you. At your word. That's the kind of power that you have, son. And there she was developing his heart. Now, harness it and use it for good. Help people. Lift people up. Be a voice for people who don't have a voice, son. Can y'all see that? There that mama was, developing his heart, his soft side. Don't abuse your power. And I would say that to all of us here today because everybody walks in a certain level of influence and power because power is just influence. Whatever it is, at whatever level, don't abuse it, but use it to help people. If you want to live your best life, because ultimately, power or no power, whatever you do is going to come back to you. And if you use your power to hurt people, somebody's going to use their power to hurt you. But if you use your power to help as many people as you can, when it's time for you to have some help, an abundance of it is going to be there for you. Use that power to help people. And then the fourth and final thing, lesson that we can learn from Lim's mom is your real treasure is where your heart is. Your real treasure is where your heart is. Verse 10. I see this in verse 10. And there she was taking him to the real treasure of his life. Beyond the crown on his head and the jewels in that crown, beyond that powerful throne he was sitting on or would one day sit on, beyond uh, his, his social status, beyond his wealth, his privilege, beyond all of those things, here this mom was guiding him 
to where he's going to find his real treasure is. And that's in that, in, in that wife. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth, her worth is far above rubies. This is the real treasure of life. I don't really want to focus on the wife, but I want to focus on what that wife represents so it can be relevant for us all. That Proverbs 31 woman that she went on to describe has some serious characteristics. She was absolutely faithful. She was absolutely loyal. And she, had, she, she loved unconditionally. And what I have discovered is that the real treasures of life, what make life worth living, is not our uh, 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 material things. There's really nothing that we can really, that's tangible. But what makes life worth living? Are the things are the, the people uh, who love us unconditionally. People who are faithful and loyal to us. These are, these are the real, real treasures of life. And he said, and, and she taught her son to go, to, to go after that kind of treasure. And when you find that kind of treasure, son, do whatever you can to keep that kind of treasure. Treasure that treasure, because that's going to make your life worth living, son. It's not the crown jewels, but what's going to make you happy is that a life that is filled up with love life that is filled up uh, uh, with, 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 with joy, a life that is filled up with um, um, faithfulness. People are faithful, loyal. And that's, that's really the kind of world that this woman, this wife, is going to build for him when he found her. And she's going to say, you're going to find out that's where, your, that's where your real treasure is. The treasure is where love is. I know that to be true. Having, and I'm so grateful and humbled to have traveled um, just really, I can literally say all over the world now. And I've been to some of the most exquisitely luxurious places. Uh, you know, one of my favorite places is, you know, you know, Hawaii really is paradise. And... Uh, I mean, so many, I can't even name all of them. All, every, probably every Caribbean island, um, in places in Haiti, um, Africa. Even when I go to Africa, I get to stay in, you know, nice places and see beautiful, nice things and sit with people of power. And, and even the place we just came from, uh, where did we just come from? Arizona. Arizona. Um, beautiful Living Word Church. I mean, that place is massive, 15,000 people. You know, I was Sunday, um, they have maybe seven, eight services a weekend or something. I don't know, some crazy amount of services they have per weekend, you know, and I had to teach three of them just, you know, they were whisking me to this service and whisking. I mean, it was something. It was an operation, boy, and a powerful, great, powerful people. I love it there. And then we went to San Diego and, you know, got to San Diego. It's a beautiful city. I mean, it's exquisitely beautiful terrain, and we stayed in a beautiful place, and it was so wonderful. And about day six or seven, we were sitting in the airport. I looked at, and we had one day we couldn't travel home because the weather was too bad. The second day, we got up that morning, and I told my husband, I said, we got to get ready. I said, there's no way I can miss this plane. We can't miss this plane. We got to get home today. We got to get home today. We got to get home today. Out of all of that wonderful, beautiful San Diego, you thought I'd be excited to stay another day and experience the beauty of San Diego. But do you know what? I needed to get home because my treasure is where my heart was, where love is. My treasures with the people who love me, who really know me and love me, and I love them unconditionally. That's where my treasure is. So I had to get home to the place that makes my life worth living. 
I had to get home. And I've learned to treasure my treasure. To treasure my treasure. I know where my treasure is. And I've learned to treasure my treasure. Do you know where your treasure is? And do you treasure your treasure? Or do you treat your treasure like trash? Because if you treat your treasure like trash, they're going to leave you. Bottom line. And it can be blamed. But do you treasure your treasure? Because this mama taught her son, when you find that, that person that helps to create a world like that for you, she's a treasure. And then he, she taught him, and when you find her, treasure her. Don't let anybody outpraise her. Oh, don't let anybody beat you praising her. All brothers, you can clap. Treasure that treasure. Treasure your treasure. Treasure your treasure. These are the lessons that I think we all can learn from a woman named Liam's mom. All right. Y'all know I'm a teacher. Let's repeat them because I want you to learn something. What's the first lesson we're going to learn from Lim's mom? Number one, don't forget who you are. Number two, don't you waste your strength. Woo, I like that one. Don't you waste your strength. Third one, don't abuse your power because you do have power. You got the power. Don't abuse your power. Number four. I probably, now looking back on it, I'll probably change that one to treasure your treasure. Treasure your treasure. Praise God. I love y'all. Can we stand and just praise the Lord as pastor comes? It's going to give us a...